it's Lisa from Sounds of NorCal, and I am here with Mike and Brandon from Evolution Eden. And uh, this is episode number six of the so Sofa Sessions. Thanks for being here. Yeah, our pleasure. Talk later. Awesome. Um, these guys drove all the way up from the Bay Area to be here today. I want to thank them for that. Um, why don't you uh, kind of take the mic and tell us a little bit about the band, the, the evolution of Evolution Eden, and um, how it came to be. You guys are rolling right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, I'll start. So Brandon and I uh, met each other about 10, 11 years ago, and uh, we worked together. Um, and uh, we were at an elementary school uh, teaching, and um, the PE teacher was uh, a rocker guy, you know, he was listening to, uh, he had like Sammy Hagar playing while the kids were running around. So we started talking and um, I told him I played some guitar and he said, oh, you should, you know, talk to Brandon. He teaches sixth grade and uh, he plays too. And so anyways, we, that's how we met. And then uh, from there, Brandon said, hey, you know, I, I played, uh, when he lived in Southern California, he played, uh, worked at um, Ocean Way Studios and has some experience with that. And said, why don't we, you know, jam a little bit. And uh, that's kind of how it started, really. And, uh, you know, we. Sorry, did you say how long ago that was? Uh, about 10 or 11 years ago. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah. And uh, so we went ahead and started writing and playing and uh, cut, a, cut a CD. And, um, yeah, that's, there you go. That was how it started. Yeah, I'm going to take a turn. Um, it was kind of funny because we had record, recorded our first CD, Story Road, on a little 16-track Korg in my kitchen, essentially. And uh, we were burning copies and giving them to our friends. And one of our friends had sent the CD in. Uh, KGO is a big radio station in the Bay Area, and they have a Best Music You've Never Heard contest. And he had sent our CD in, and they picked a song, Walls of Wonderland, from that CD and they played it and we ended up winning the contest, which we didn't really even know about. <laughs> um, so they called us and, hey, you won this contest and they wanted us to go on air. And uh, they started asking us, oh, well, where are you guys playing? And we didn't even have a band. So we decided, well, I guess we should put a band together. So um, we ended up getting hooked up with our bass player, Andy, and that worked out really great. Um, and then this name kept circling around this Jim Bovey, who's our drummer, and we ended up hooking up with him, and it's been the four of us ever since, the original four the whole time. So speaking of the band, um, I'd like you to share a little bit with uh, the viewers about the music and the style. I hate the word genre. I hate because there, you can't do it anymore. There's so many different styles. So you said you were kind of listening to or your uh, – friend was kind of listening to Sammy Hagar and things like that, but, you know, influences and in what your sound is and how it stands out from kind of the, the crowd. Um, well, you know, walking in here and looking at, at you know, your pictures, that's uh, what I grew up on. Um, even maybe a little further back, 70s rock, you know, the Boston, uh, Steve Miller, that type of stuff. I had older sisters. Yeah. Um, so that was sort of my influence. I'm a little older than Brandon, and, and that's kind of what I've always, you know, I've kind of brought, you know, I, I, the, you know, early Van Halen, Sammy Hagar, uh, you know, and, and as I got older, you know, Tesla and, and think bands like that. Um, so, you know, guitar based bands, um, you know, vocals that you can understand what they're singing. You know, I mean, uh, some of the new music today, I, I like the music, but I'm not so much into the vocals because I can't, yeah. you know, the screaming and the anger that was, you know, I'm. I'm a happy, you know, kind of happy, but also music that my, you know, parents listen to, uh, you know, I like Hall and & Oates and Billy Joel and those, you know, pop music. Yeah. And I would say that's sort of uh, my influences when, when there's songs and progressions and things uh, and maybe themes of songs, mm -hmm. you know, that we kind of borrow from, right. from, those, from those artists. Yeah, for me, it, it started with the Beatles. Um, picking up some of the, like, Sgt. Peppers and things like that. And I love that. From there, um, I progressed to Kiss. And Ace really was the reason why I picked up the guitar, of course. <laughs> uh, th that caught my eye right away. <laughs> so uh, I loved Kiss. 
And then, uh, you know, my uncles, um, we would go cruising in Napa when cruising was allowed there. Uh, and they would get me into Billy Squire and Def Leppard and Night Ranger. And, you know, I kind of missed the Eddie Van Halen and a lot of the shredding guitar players uh, until the mid 80s um, when I would, would got get into like George Lynch and Paul Gilbert and things like that. Um, but m my earliest guitar influence were definitely Ace Frehley and surprisingly Eric Clapton. My dad had, a, had an Eric Clapton DVD and I would just sit there and watch what he did and that's how I learned to play guitar, watching Eric Clapton DVD. That's why my leads are all so slow. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely song. We like uh, songs. Our, we try to tell stories in our songs. So Brian Adams, I think, is a big influence on both of us. S yeah, so, um, you know, we're trying to do three and a half minute stories. That's cool. So talk about maybe what's your favorite song that you've recorded and that you like to sing, play. Um, is there a particular one that stands out for you, Mike? Um, yeah, that's tough. Um, a couple of songs we put in the set almost every time was um, uh, Rules Are Made For Breaking, which is kind of a, kind of has a Kiss vibe to it, an early Kiss vibe to it that we like. Um, and also uh, Center of the Universe, Rock and Roll is the Center of the Universe. Which, so they're just kind of fun. Um, you know, they've got a good solo in it, you know, a little cowbell mixed in there. And, uh, you know, they're, they're catchy and they're fun. Um, it's tough because all the songs have a different, um, you know, there's, there's, those are faster rocker songs, but we also have, you know, acoustic songs. We've performed acoustically, Brandon and I, on many occasions, and we can do all this material, I think, as good that way. That's how we write it. Yeah. So, you know, it always starts there. Um, so there's, you know, there's love songs and ballads that are, that are mixed in there, um, too. But those are two that I, I love playing, and we always, you know, we always have those in the set. Yeah, Center of the Universe always goes over well live. And, you know, when we wrote that song, it we had the chorus for it. But if you listen to the verses, they're really just song titles of, of songs that we grew up with. We sat down and we're trying to pick names of Beth, I Hear You Calling, Tommy and Gina. And, you know, and so we really just threw all of our favorite songs and that's our ver all the verses. So we tried to be really clever uh, with that one. Um, as far as favorite songs to play live, um, those are definitely two that go over well every time. Uh, we've got a new album that's going to be coming out uh, in the fall, probably September or October. And uh, I just love playing everything off of that so far. Um, Our Great Escape has a great riff that's really up-tempo. Um, uh, a song that's really going over well right now is called Fallen in Love by the Radio Light. And um, that one definitely has hit a chord with people. Um, but, you know, there are songs on there, like you said, the acoustic stuff. We have a song called Saturday Night Drive-In that I love the lyrics to. And uh, off the new album, we've got a song called California Song that uh, we were watching when the economy was really low. We were seeing all these come to California for vacation. So we kind of, well, let's write a song that, promotes California. So, uh, you know, that one kind of hits close to home just because, you know, like we do get associated with, oh, you're a, a Bay Area band or you're an L.A. band and we just consider ourselves a California band. We'll go anywhere. We love California. Proud to be a Cal Californians. So that's a, that's a good one too. Those are all good. They're all good. Yeah. <laughs> Take your pick. Right. Well, speaking of playing live, um, I was fortunate enough, you invited me to come see you play and open for Mr. Big at the Boardwalk. Um, you also have a couple other shows coming up here in town. Well, one, for sure, coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, you want to talk about opening for um, Dawkin? Um, yeah, we're excited about that. Uh, Ace of Spades on April 16th. Um, and this will be, we've, we've opened up for Dawkin uh, in L.A. Um, last year, I think it was, last summer. So we've played with them once before. So this is, uh, you know, and I'm, it's pretty fun when you get to, you know, hang out with the bands that, you know, you, yeah. you that influenced you, you know. So it's 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 kind of a, a double win for us. You know, we get to play with them, but then, then you go back and watch the show, which you would have gladly went and paid for anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, fun. And then um, 
the week after we uh, the the twenty fourth we play with Striper, right. um, and that one's in Los Angeles. At, oh, yeah, at, yeah, at the Whiskey A Go Go. So we we have not played with them before, but we're going to be our the direct support that night, which is which is nice. So there's usually four or five bands on the bill, so we'll play, you know, right before they come out, which is great because we get the benefit of of a nice crowd and um, and I think we'll be a good fit. Um, you know, our music is. Eh, you know, similar as far as two guitars, and we both split vocals, and uh, so I think we're a good match. And the uh, the uh, the manager of the club, we've got a good uh, reputation with, and a good working relationship with. So we've had some good events. Other than that, um, we're gonna do. Oh, we do have an acoustic uh, event. We're gonna play in the Bay Area, a uh, benefit show um, at the Fox the Fox Theater. That's in Redwood City, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's part of a, a fundraising event, and we do that too. Um, when we do things with, uh, you know, a lot of stuff with education, we, we uh, put our time into that too, so. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, for, for us, being a, a Bay Area band, we focus a lot on playing in Los Angeles, but also we've been trying to develop Sacramento um, for a long time. When the bands that we are a good fit with, they skip San Francisco. They, you know, they go to L.A., they go to Sacramento, and then they're gone. And we've been trying to, to break into the Sacramento market for years. I mean, we've been a band for over 10 years. Um, and we were lucky enough last year to play with Enough's Enough at the Boardwalk. And um, that went really well. And then nobody really came through town that we were a good match for. And then Eric Martin was a success, and so now they've bumped us up to the Ace of Spades, and you know we're hoping. I know that's becoming the House of Blues, right. um, but you know we're hoping to continue that relationship. Sacramento is a great community for rock and roll. Um, my grandparents live in Fair Oaks, so I, growing up, I went to concerts at the original Arco Arena. We would go to Cal Expo when it was Cal Expo. We, I was there for. Tesla when they taped the love song video with Great White. I mean, so I grew up coming to concerts in Sacramento and know that Sacramento is a great rock community. So we want to tap into that. Yeah, Sacramento um, definitely is a good rock community. Um, it I, I tends to lean to heavier stuff. Um, there's a lot of metal clubs right now and not too much straight up rock, which is unfortunate. I mean, I think we need more. Um, it'd be nice to have a few more venues for bands like yourselves to play. I think there's a great movement to go back to, I've said this to another uh, interview subject before, uh, my friend Jeremiah, you know, I think there's a, a little bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it, nostalgia, going back to the vinyl and um, going back to rock, um, Winery Dogs. <laughs> great band um that straight up rock style and i'm i love it and i think um the more we tap into that and it and expose the bands that are doing it i'd love to be a part of that and um hopefully get you guys on some more shows up here for sure um because you know they're our generation <laughs> definitely that's that's their kind of music what they grew up with you know what we all grew up with and um I think that there's an audience for it and in, 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 in Sacramento. And it's been a difficult, not difficult, but a challenging road to get the people to out, out to show sometimes, unless there's a big name, you know, affiliated with it. So um, it'd be nice to just have a rock club where we could all go and hang out and know what to expect. And, you know, so I have, I have motivations in that. In that area. <laughs> so um, talk a little bit about the album. Oh, you brought three of your former yeah. CDs. Why don't you show what those are and talk about those. And then talk about the new one that you've got coming out later in the year. All right. Well, here's the, uh, the first one we talked about that Brandon and I made uh, in the kitchen, basically. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, it's 14 tracks on here. And, uh, you know, the recording quality is not... Uh, what uh you know it was with these yeah. uh cuz we quite frankly didn't expect to do anything with it um <laughs> so you know it was sort of after the fact uh, the drums were were programmed drums and bass you know Brandon had done all that uh on his own so 
Um, when we did get Andy into the band, we, we put the bass on it, but we still didn't have a drummer. Uh, so it's, it sounds a little stiff and rigid, but there's a lot of songs. We still play uh, several of these tracks, uh, Walls of Wonderland often, uh, Summer Nights, uh, Radioactive. Those are staples of our show still. So the songs we're really proud of. So that was the first one, and that was well, two, 2006. There you go. Well, so that, that tells you. So there's, that was the first one. So our second CD, uh, Saturday Night Drive-In, we had the pleasure of working with Bo Hill on this CD. He produced Warrant and Winger and Rat and um, Twisted Sister, Alice Cooper. And we um, kind of on a, a, a fluke were like talking about producers and mixers that we really like. And we're like, I had met Bo Hill working in L.A. And I'm like, let's just send our CD, this one. A story road let's send it to Bo Hill see what he thinks and um, so we sent it and it was like two months later and it happened to be April 1st pap gets a phone call from uh, hi I'm Bo Hill I heard your CD I want to work with you guys and um, they hang up and pap calls me and goes did you just call me and say because it was April 1st <laughs> April Fool's Day He's like, did you just call me and pretend to be Bo Hill? And I'm like, no, I, I didn't. He goes, well, he gave me this number, and we have friends in Texas, and Bo Hill lives in Texas. So we thought, okay, it's got to be our friends in Texas. They're pulling a joke on us on, on April Fool's Day. You know, that is a really good one. And then, supportive yeah, supportive friends, right? They, they love us. And um, a couple of days later, we get another phone call from Bo Hill. Like, hey, or we called him back, I think. And it really was Bo Hill. Um, so the joke was on us. So, uh, he flew out for a weekend and, you know, we sent him the, the 12 songs and he, um, picked three or four that, uh, he thought could be singles and helped us rearrange them. Taught us a lot about songwriting. He kind of gave us, you know, in 15 seconds, you got to get to the hook. That was his, he called it the, 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 um, third eye blind rule. And he's like, you know, in 15 seconds, you got to get to the hook. So he really impacted our songwriting from then. Um, so this album was um, released. We did get signed to a record label um, to release this album. And that was a complete disaster for us. They just buried the album. And we had worked so hard. And, you know, it's a very, this one's very sleek and produced because that's uh, Bo Hill's style. But um, Center of the Universe... Uh, some of one. There's a great song on here called Nothing Better to Do that we uh, we tend to put some tongue-in-cheek songs on our, at least one. And this was around the time when the Paris Hiltons and the Kim Kardashians were really popular. So it's kind of a, about these rich people that are famous for doing nothing and they just do stupid things because they've got nothing better to do. Yeah, so um, that one turned out really great. Uh, the record company didn't push it too much. Um, so we dropped them and decided to go all on our own for the next one. And then this one, uh, The Perfect Crime, uh, we did, I'm looking at this, this is 2012 already? Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this one was more of an EP. Uh, we just wanted to get something out there. So um, and just about everything on this one we play. Uh, rules were made for break and little things, Perfect Crime, The Ride, One Hit Wonder, and A Night to Remember, we... They're all, they're all tracks we play. And this one was uh, mixed by Andy Johns, um, who was Zeppelin's uh, Stones. Stones. Um, so this has, this has a uh, kind of a heavier, heavier kind of vibe as far as the drums and everything are really big on it. And uh, I think this was the last record he worked on before he passed away. Um, yeah, so, so that was interesting, too. So we got a different kind of perspective. And this is you know, kind of a rough Englishman. You know, who would kind of give you, tell you straight up what he liked and didn't like. Um, but we're proud of this, too. It's, uh, you know, again, it's, it's stuff that we play all the time. And then we've got uh, Modern Nostalgia is our upcoming record. And it's, uh, yeah. And uh, so that's uh, 11 tracks, 11 tracks uh, that are we're mixing right now. So, um you know, once it gets mixed, then we'll get it mastered. We use um, John Cuniberti to master everything, and he's uh, most you, most people probably wouldn't know that name, but he does all Joe Satriani's work. 
Yeah, and uh, he's a real master at, um, not mastering, but he's a master uh, kind of engineer. Uh -huh. So he has uh, been the person who we send our stuff to to get it mastered. So, so we're looking forward to you know, getting that out there. But we're already playing some of the, the tracks from, from that live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so we're all full on in. Yeah, this was, um, a lot of the songs are either, Pap and I are both the lead singers of the band. So kind of going back to that 70s style of two lead vocalists, you know, the Night Rangers yeah. and the um, um, Sticks and Kiss, you know. So um, this was really the first album. A lot of times Pap will come in with an idea or I'll come in with an idea. This was the first album, Modern Nostalgia, where we sat in a room and made the record, wrote the songs together. So um, it's pretty eclectic, but yeah, we've been playing probably four or five songs live. We do Our Great Escape, Mattis Hatter, um, Fall in Love by the Radio Light, a song called DOA, and um, at the Dawkins show, we're going to do a song we've never played before called Broken Hearts and Happy Endings. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> First time you played live. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I, always, I always say... You know, I, I can't know how well it's going to go until you, you walk that. out there and then it's like, what were those words? And yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's the singer's nightmare. Is But the good thing is nobody knows what the words are. Yeah. So if I fake it, you know, only they, I can feel them looking at me. So yeah, so we've got, we've got those coming up. So lots of, you know, lots of excitement and we'll just keep on, you know, grinding it out and trying to enjoy, you know, ourselves and doing what we like to do, you know. Awesome. Well, we look forward to having you up in Sacramento many more times in the near future, um, at the boardwalk, at Ace of Spades, at whatever other clubs we can find to host you guys and um, get your Sacramento base fan base going here. I think that's a great idea and, and you know, expand your horizons. Uh, very uh, much luck to you on your Dawkins show. I think that'll be a great one. Um, uh, when you do release the CD, please let us know so we can all listen to it and download it and buy it and do whatever we need to do to help support you guys because we're very interested in, um, like I said, expanding the rock scene everywhere, everywhere. So thanks for being here, guys. I want to, uh, guys, well, thanks so much. Um, Sofa Sessions number six, right, Evolution Eden. Check them out. Thanks. <laughs>